for joining us today on KCSU Stanford 90.1 FM for our five-minute news update. The Hoover Institution recently hosted an event by Dr. Frank D. Cotter, a renowned historian of modern China and chair professor of humanities at the University of Hong Kong. We were very privileged to interview Dr. D. Cotter at this event about his new book, The Cultural Revolution, A People's History, 1962 to 1976. How did you organize your new book? It's organized chronologically, and it seems to me that one difficulty we have in understanding the Cultural Revolution is that it simply isn't one single thing or one single period. All of us have in mind, of course, images of screaming red guards on Tiananmen Square, uh, where Mao receives them. But that really only marked a year or two, 66 to roughly 1968, when Mao uses Red Guards to attack the party itself. So I organized it in four parts. One is called the early years, 1962-66. One has to understand where this cultural revolution comes from. Part two is called the Red Years, when Red Guards appear and Mao uses the people to attack the party. It's 1966-68. That's followed by a part I refer to as the Black Years, when the army comes in and very much transforms China into a garrison state, a military dictatorship, from 1968 to 1971. The last part, part four, is probably the most intriguing and I call it the grey years. Grey here is a very good colour in that ordinary people in the countryside realise that the party has been very badly damaged by the Cultural Revolution and in a silent revolution start reconnecting with the market, opening black markets, opening factories and pretty much uh, try to pull themselves out of that misery where they have been put by the Communist Party itself. That covers 71 to the death of Mao in 1976. Who came after Mao and how were they different? For several years, a man called Hua Guofeng, but the one we most remember is, of course, Deng Xiaoping, who mm. assumed the reins of power in 1978. It is frequently said that Deng Xiaoping is the architect of economic reform, that he moved away from Mao to liberalize the economy. But my book shows that he was not the architect of economic reforms. The people were. It is the people, millions upon millions of people, who very quietly, surreptitiously, on the sly, started redistributing collective assets, started killing the land on their own, started opening black markets, started doing everything we associate with the economic reforms. So when Deng Xiaoping came to power in 78, he simply couldn't send these people back into the collectives. He couldn't consolidate the planned economy. But uh, he's not the one who liberalized the economy. It is ordinary people. What will your next project be? My next book will be on dictators and the image they project, the cult of personality. How did they build up that image? I think it's important to understand that there is naked power on the one hand, but on the other, dictators need more than that. They need to project an image. They need to create the illusion that ordinary people actually adore them. Have you decided which dictators you will choose in your book? Yes, I had a long list of about 12, and that's been trimmed to about eight. So I start with the original dictator, in my mind, namely Mussolini. He was very gifted at building up an image, at addressing the crowds on the balcony, at organizing big parades, at projecting the image of a very savvy, gifted uh, leader. That's followed, obviously, by Hitler, Stalin, Mao. If you would like more information about Dr. Frank D. Cotter's upcoming book or his new book, The Cultural Revolution, a People's History 1962 to 1976, please contact his website, frankdcotter.com. That's frankdicotter.com. We would like to thank Dr. Decoter very much for this interview. We would also like to thank the Hoover Institution's Library and Archives for inviting KCSU to this event. If you would like a copy of today's interview, please download it from moderntechnews.com. That's moderntechnews.com. And please follow the link to news. Music.